Cell phone surveillance explained. Cell phone surveillance is of growing concern to some mobile users, as the states get increasingly more sophisticated and powerful technologies that allow for them to spy on our every move, literally, we can also learn how to safeguard ourselves from such threats, but before we can do that, you need to understand why this technology exists, who it is used by, what it does, and what privacy implications apply with such technologies. There is something known as a stingray operation, more commonly known as a cell tower simulator, this is a simulator that pretends to act like a cell tower, and mobile phones generally connect to the strongest signal in the area to ensure consistent coverage, however, if your phone connects to a stingray device, that stingray device can see everything that is stored on the phone, text messages, phone calls, both incoming and outgoing photos, music, etc., it can also tell what type of phone you have, the IMEI code, plus a whole bunch of other personally identifiable things. But what's worse is that the Stingray device will not just catch your phone, if many other phones are in the area, they will also latch onto the Stingray device, meaning whoever is operating the Stingray operation can see everything on any devices that are in the area and this not only raises concerns for privacy conscious users like me, it also means our telco companies and tech companies are not doing anything, let alone enough, to protect us and inform us about such technologies, that have the potential to ruin our lives. Cell phone surveillance has been around for more than a decade, Edward Snowden said the NSA surveillance program of America had been running for at least 10 years prior to Snowden leaking secretive information related to the NSA, and if your response to all of this is, I have nothing to hide, or, if you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear, that is the exact fucking reason we are in such a surveillance place in the first place, that is the reason the cops are working with FedEx to spy on you, yes, it's true, cops are now working with FedEx to spy on their users probably to catch out anyone buying something even slightly unusual, or a large quantity of something like petrol, what's the bet that's why cops are teaming up with FedEx, we're going to talk more about the FedEx police partnership in a future video, but let's get back to phone surveillance. Stingray devices can latch onto any phone, including iPhones, dumb phones, and feature phones, no phone is immune from this dangerous technology, and you think your government does not have access to the IRS source code, of fucking course they do, they have all the power, you have none, and I know Apple is all about privacy, but really, I think that's just a marketing gimmick to get users from Android to switch to IRS, because while IOS may have less vulnerabilities overall, it's not immune from keyloggers, browser hijackers, and worse yet, stingray devices, so good luck trying to hide the fact you're showing up at a rally or protest if you use an iPhone, because not only can police use Stingray devices, hackers can also use them, and you can even make your own DIY Stingray or IMSI catcher, and of course, it is against the law to use such devices unless you're using it for a very specific reason, or you work for the government and are required to use such devices, but if hackers can use them and likely not face legal consequences, then why can't us citizens start taking action, and fight for what is right? Too many people have become too comfortable and complacent with their phones and operating systems, and now that Apple and Google harvest a shit ton of data from you, people think it's the new normal and that we have to accept this, but I am here to tell you that that is not at all the way we have to go about things, you can choose to fight for what is right fight for your data, your privacy, your right to not be monitored during a phone call, the very basics of privacy seem to get less and less relevant, as each day passes, cops can be listening to your phone call and you wouldn't even know it, hackers could be reading through your text messages, without your consent, someone could be perving on you in the shower, or worse, they could steal photos of you and your hot girlfriend, are you seriously going to tell me you have nothing to hide? Let's say you have lots of photos on your phone of a hot girl you're dating, well if someone uses a cell tower simulator and gets access to your phone, 
They can not only see the photo, they can gather all sorts of identifiable information about it, such as the metadata, which is crucial for finding a person's location, and you will not even be aware you're being snooped on. Quite literally, so how can we protect ourselves from this, you may ask. Unfortunately, some methods are costly, require lots of time, patience, and skills, and one way you can stop your device from communicating with cell towers, or any network frequencies, is to buy yourself a Faraday bag, designed to block all cell signals and wireless communications to and from your device, this might be great if you're considering a burner phone, or you want this phone to practically be untraceable, but unless you need that level of security, it may seem overkill or unnecessary to buy a Faraday bag, but if you're serious about security and privacy, you must do what is required in order to stay safe, and a Faraday bag can be expensive, so maybe a tin foil hat solution is better, I know you can buy aluminium foil and wrap your phone in that, but I think the Faraday bag provides guaranteed privacy and security, going by the tin foil hat method is only for those who don't have the money for a Faraday bag, but if all this seems a bit extreme, you can try a bunch of other things. 1. Try and find a carrier that offers private mobile plans, and does not require you to pay via a credit or debit card, remember, it's all about the game and how you play it, and you gotta do things right if you wanna reap the rewards, so do not ever use a credit card to purchase something you know will likely be used for nefarious purposes, such as a burner phone, instead, use cash, or try cryptocurrencies, specifically, Monero, you can buy legitimate tech offerings from the dark web using Monero, and that's probably the best place to look for a burner phone. A private carrier is far less likely to hand over personal information to your government than say one of the big telco players, such as AT&T, or Verizon, those are just some examples but both of these telcos have been known to sell user data, and both have had massive data breaches, which has led to millions of Americans' data ending up for sale on the dark web, or worse, so if you opt to go with a private carrier, not only will you gain back some privacy, you also lessen the chances of being affected by some sort of data breach, you think the hackers are going to go after a tiny little telco company, no way, they keep their eyes on the big prize, and the hackers ain't no dummies. 2. Purchase a Faraday bag. It's absolutely essential that you do this if you do not want the government or cops to break into your device with a stingray operation. The Faraday bag uses special materials designed to block any cellular signals and wireless communications. Airplane mode does not entirely disable these, even though we tend to think that when our device is on airplane mode, all wireless communications are off, but that's not the case at all, if the cops want to latch onto your phone and it's in airplane mode, there's a pretty good chance they can still track it and locate it, even if the phone has no SIM card, some people mistakenly believe that removing the SIM card makes a phone untraceable, well I hate to break it to you, but that does not make it any less trackable, if anything, the cops are more likely going to go after a device that has no SIM card, because they may think that whoever is using that device could be up to no good, so it's absolutely essential you do everything that's required if you want to truly protect yourself from state surveillance, and while no method is 100% bulletproof, you can certainly minimize the risk of your privacy being infringed upon by law enforcement or hackers. 3. Purchase a burner phone, and do not purchase it with a credit card, preferably. Go to a retail store and ask what sort of phones they have, plenty of small stores and bigger markets have phones for sale, some places even sell older refurbished devices, and while you could buy an old phone online, that's giving the government a literal paper trail of what you have just bought, and if they know you're going to be using that phone for illegal purposes, you can expect the cops landing on your doorstep in no time, taking you away to rot in jail, so please don't do anything stupid or retarded, you absolutely stick by the fucking rules for internet security and privacy, there is no cutting corners or making a quick buck here, 
we do things slowly and methodically, and we test them thoroughly to ensure they are going to serve the intended purposes that they are designed to serve. If the only way you can buy a burner phone is online, consider using a disposable credit card, or a temporary one, or something which is not likely going to leave a trace of real world information, and while it may sound weird to recommend such methods, some people don't have any choice in the matter, if your nearest store is 50 kilometers or more from your home and you don't have a car, it makes things very difficult, and getting a disposable credit card could land you on a watch list of sorts, so I would be very careful using any sort of credit card to buy a burner phone, and you also leave a paper trail of your residential address, cops wanna come bust your ass for your new burner phone, they can find out exactly when you bought it, when it was delivered, and they can get a company like eBay to hand over user data, so I would not risk it, just use cash, and try find a convenience store that likely sells old phones, the risk is just not worth it. So, I hope you have learned something from today's video, and if you have, please give it a like, and share it with others to help more people become aware of these dangerous technologies. You wanna know something else that's scary, your government could have you on the watch list, for doing nothing, and you might not even be aware of it, we'll cover that in a future video. Stay safe, stay out of trouble, and don't make yourself a target for law enforcement, please. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. See you next video. Bye for now.